Stephen A., what's your reaction in terms of what this says about Kevin Durant? Well, what it says is that <clears throat> essentially he's going to be all right. The sun is going to shine tomorrow because winning a championship isn't the be all end all. That's what it says to him. That's what it says to me about him. Is that a crime? No. Is that a reason to vilify him? No. But it is a reason that explains why in your 10th year in the NBA, you probably have never, you haven't won a title yet. That might have something to do with it. It needs to hurt you more than it hurts any of us. That's what it needs to come down to. And one of the reasons why so many people out here in the working world lament the fact that so many of these athletes make an exorbitant amount of dollars, if they're just hating on the money, the hell with them. They should be ashamed of themselves. Don't spend anybody's money for them. Don't hate on what their marketability allows them to earn. The flip side to it, however, is that you do want the impression that it hurts you more than it hurts us for you not to get the job done. And when you give off that impression, it brings and invites a mentality that questions whether or not any of these guys deserve that. When we look at the absence of competition, the questionable parity, and things of that nature, it find, it lends itself towards you saying, see, these is, this is why we would be in support of the NBA limiting the years on guaranteed contracts to two or three years, because maybe if you had to win in order to get those exorbitant dollars, a level of urgency is something that we would witness more of. And as a result, we would all, as the paying customer, get our money's worth on a night in, night out basis, as opposed to waiting until June to get that. Those are the kind of things that lends itself towards accurate or not. When you have that somewhat blase, nonchalant attitude towards a championship, it grates the average fan. He said nothing criminal. He said nothing that folks should be insulted about or anything like that. But after all that we went through this year, after you made that move from Oklahoma City to Golden State, one would have expected to hear you say, I came here for a championship. That's how bad I wanted it. That's how bad I need it for me. I want this that badly. I'm not saying he doesn't feel that way. I'm saying that particular quote didn't give off that impression, and that to me is very, very unfortunate. If Kevin Durant didn't care about winning a championship to the extent that he claims, why is he in OK? Why isn't he in OKC right now? Ooh, why did he sign one, with Max. the Warriors? He signed with the Warriors to win a championship, and I think he thinks he's just being honest with people. But in being honest with people, he is betraying something about himself. You know, in in I'll give you we're talking a little bit boxing today. One of the problems with a fighter who figures the going is, is a little too tough, I'm going to pack it in today, it's not my night, is once you quit, and it's a messed up standard because fighters take their lives into their hands, but once you quit, as Stephen A. said, you, you see the sun still comes up tomorrow. The world didn't end. Just that part of your identity did as an undefeated fighter, let's say. Once you accept losing, it's easier to lose. Right? I mean, look, the world still goes on. I'm st in Kevin Durant's case, I'm a young, rich, famous guy with a, a ton going for me. Life is sweet. So when you hear an athlete like Durant have to point out that he has a fulfilling, rich, fulfilling life off the court, and if he loses the championship, it doesn't mean everything to him, what is he actually indicating about himself? That by NBA standards, in the American sporting life, in American sports culture, because Durant is so good, he is going to be compared to LeBron and Larry Bird and Dr. J and all the other great small forwards, at least, if not just all the other great NBA uh, players in history. He's giving himself an out. He's giving himself not an excuse to quit exactly, but an excuse in case he loses. As yeah, soon as you hear an athlete of that caliber start to point to all the things in their life they have to live for should they lose. Well, Number one, it shows you it actually is important to them, or they wouldn't have to point to life and death stuff, right? To the important stuff in life. And number two, that he's building in an excuse. He may be telling the truth about himself, Stephen A., but in that case, he's telling on himself. Well, yeah, he is telling on himself. You know, yesterday I was talking about, and I was alluding, uh, alluding to this with LeBron, because I went ballistic about LeBron. Somebody was questioning him about being the GOAT and what have you, and he went into a conversation about being a role model, being very uh, charitable. We all know that he's charitable. We all know that he's an incredible role model. We know, all know about his philanthropy. We know that he's one of the greatest athletes in American history, considering his generosity and his conscientiousness. What the hell does that have to do? 
do with us talking about you as a basketball player. It's almost like they try to guilt you into questioning their greatness by bringing up something off the court to lend itself towards elevating their character or whatever when nobody questioned their character in the, in the first place. With Kevin Durant, for example, since we're on that subject, you got all of these outlets, particularly in the Bay Area, getting on me because of the other day, I had a problem with his quote when he talked to the fans about just don't watch. I never said anything about Kevin Durant the man. I never said anything about Kevin Durant the person. I talked about that specific quote, but we live in a society where a heightened level of sensitivity definitely drapes all over these athletes, Max, and at the end of the day, what it comes down to is clear. If you are a champion, if you are elite, if you want to be considered and recognized as one of the best ever, we have a right to look at champions and then look at you and wonder what's missing from you, specifically if you're Kevin Durant and you're that great and you've been in the league for 10 years and you don't have a championship considering how great you are. So now that you're going up against LeBron James and we all knew this, would, this confrontation was coming, now we get a quote like this, oh, if I don't win, you know, the sun will shine tomorrow, it'll be all right. We don't want to hear that. This is not the time. It's you, it's, it's LeBron, two of the best three players on the planet. We don't want to hear that. And hearing it, and you are a lot the of favorite. Questions.